How are we doing, everybody? Welcome to the Master and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C. So glad to have you guys here tonight. We have a very, very special episode. It is Blend Again Round One. That's right. Uh, the response that I got for uh, the little blend contest tonight uh, has been off the charts. Uh, I got a total of nine blends that we're going to be um, putting in a blind taste test head to head. Um, and because I got nine, uh, so this is what I'm going to do, guys. So uh, while everyone's kind of joining the chat, I'm just kind of kind of run down how this is going to work. So because I got nine blends and to keep it fair, I didn't want to squeeze all nine into into one night because my palate would be shot and I couldn't give, you know, probably blend six through nine any sort of fair shot. So um, so what I'm doing is I picked five. I'm going to do five tonight. Um, I'll, I'll let you know whose they are, uh, but I, I don't know in the glass whose is whose. They're all, they're all mixed up. I poured them a while ago. I don't know who's and whose, but I will tell you whose, whose blends are in here. Uh, I'm going to squeeze in another live uh, probably over the weekend to do the rest. Uh, and then Wednesday night, uh, I will probably pick the top two and... Um, and go head to head and declare a winner then, because by Wednesday I have some really cool other prizes to uh, to kind of tell you guys about. That's going to be included in the prize pack. Um, so, but we're going to go through all that. But just want to say welcome, Whiskey Wednesday. Also want to say thank you so much. Uh, in the last I don't know 15, 20 minutes, I just hit 2,000 subs and went a little bit over. Um, I can't believe the, the growth and how amazing you guys have been in the support of the channel. So uh, I can't thank you enough. So let's see who's in the chat. I have my other laptop here set up, guys. So I'm going to, if I look over here, this is why I'm looking over here. I want to talk to you guys in the chat a little bit. Um, I know we had, uh, I was talking to a bunch of you earlier before. Uh, Whiskey Shenanigans in the house. Monica Willits, Mark Goins, Joe Green, Christine Deans, Michael Hassett. Uh, let's see, Andrew Spurls here, Brandon Weiss, how you doing, man? Brian Brennicke's in the house, William Davilar, uh, Dan the Man Trout, thank you so much, man, Stephen Sussman, Taylor Deems is here, how you doing? Uh, let's see, who else we got? Whiskey Ace is in the house, Loch Ness is here, uh, thank you so much for coming in, Brad Murphy, good day, buddy, Rorana Hernandez is here, Cap and Make It Happen, of course, thanks for coming in. Jason Coates, he just made it. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Uh, we got who else is coming in? We got more people coming in. Eric Whitford, Richie Z, the man. How you doing, buddy? Go Habs. Thanks for the congrats. I appreciate it, guys. Um, all right. Let's see. Joseph Brazil's in the house. Uh, Rob Benta is here. Just came in. Wow, we got a lot of people coming in. This is awesome. Uh, I've got 45 in the chat right now. So, uh, I want to actually show you first, uh, before we get started here, guys. Um, well, first, let me get this out of the way. I want to thank uh, the, the support from my patrons. Um, so I really want to thank uh, these particular people that have jumped in and become patrons. Uh, really thank you guys for the support and the, the amazing contributions that I look forward to in the, uh, in the channel in the, next cup, in, the next, uh, in the future of the growth of the channel. So really appreciate it. Um, so if you feel like you want to become a Patreon and, and support the channel, uh, there's where you can go. Check it out. Uh, I have a lot of cool incentives for you guys to join. Um, and, you know, you get to be a part of the growth of the channel, and I ask for your input a lot. So thanks a lot. Now, now as I said, I want to call out the contenders. So now what I did is I took the nine samples. I put all the names in a hat, took them out, and what I did is I picked five names. Now, these are the five names that are going to be part of the sample shootout tonight. And here they are. Here is the contenders for tonight. So take it all in, guys. Here we got. We have Richie Z. His blend is in here. Whiskey Shenanigans. Uh, Christine Deems, who sent me a few blends, but her one of them is in here. Uh, Jason Coates. He sent me uh, his blend. He's the one blend with a scotch in it, guys. So he's got a scotch in here. And Monica Willits, her blend is in here tonight. So these are the five that are going to be going head-to-head -to -head tonight. I'm going to pick my top two uh, from this lineup tonight to move on to the next round. And it uh, should be pretty fun from there. So um, first, let's find out uh, what are all you guys drinking up in here. Hey, Bourbon Sains in the house. How you doing, Chris? 
Uh, let's see. Everyone is. <laughs> we have a girl fight in the house. Here we go. <laughs> Christine and Monica are going to be going at it uh, for blend supremacy. So. <clears throat> Uh, also, let me see here. I'm going to be taking some tasting notes as I kind of go through these. Um, but first, I'm going to have a quick sip of water before we get into the blends. And uh, what are you all sipping tonight? I know I know we had um, Monica Will. She told me she was sipping a sample of the one of my favorites, the Little Book, number one, which is awesome. Love it. Um, I think somebody was drinking some JTS Brown, Bottled and Bond, which is actually what I was just sipping on earlier. Uh, I was kind of warming up my palate with some JTS. So cheers, everybody. Mm. JTS Brown is probably one of the one of those really unbelievable buys in bourbon. I love it. It's cheap. It's good. It's nutty. It's delicious. I love it. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, Knob Creek store pick. Nice. Richie Z's got the Bell Mead Sherry Finish Bourbon. That's an awesome choice, Richie. Eric Whitford's got some Booker's. Uh, Bourbon Saint is working, not sipping yet. <laughs> uh, Elijah Craig for uh, BR Shooter. Port Charlotte, Jim Beam. Wow, we got some good stuff. Mike from Whiskey Shenanigans, he's sipping on some Blantons. Doug has got some Little Book Chapter 2. Very cool. All right. All right, guys, so before we get into the blends, as always, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit of news. So we have a few stories, uh, not many, before we get into our blend showdown here. Um, a, a cool story kind of came in through the wire that I saw about the growth of the Kentucky bourbon, um, the bourbon industry. And a while back, I heard that, and this was from the words of, um, if any of you have seen the, the movie Neat, um, amazing movie, Jimmy Russell had mentioned uh, in, that, in that movie that they're making so much bourbon now that they have, they had a barrel for basically each person that lives in Kentucky. That's how much bourbon they had storing and aging. Incredible. Um, a new study revealed the Kentucky bourbon industry has doubled in size in just a decade. Uh, over the past 10 years, the total number of distilleries in Kentucky has more than tripled. I mean, think about that. Um, and now there are 68 distilleries in Kentucky across 32 counties. That's nuts. Um, and now what I just said about that one barrel for every person, in fact, now there are almost two barrels of spirits for every person within Kentucky. That's ridiculous. Could you imagine living in Kentucky knowing there's probably two barrels of whiskey just sitting there that you could actually claim if you could? <laughs> I love that. So um, uh, let's get into, we have three announcements for some uh, new bottles coming out. I know you guys like to see what's coming out here. Um, so I'm going to show you this uh, first bottle that's coming out that looks really interesting. Uh, and that is... This one, this is uh, a Douglas Lang introducing Old Particulars as a single cast scotch. Uh, they in unveiled this whiskey series uh, with the new elements collection under the Old Particular portfolio. Now, I think I spoke about this a little bit, but this gave a little bit more, um, more info to what's actually behind it. Uh, the first of these limited edition releases will be Fire. So they're gonna be releasing single cast releases inspired by the four elements, Fire, Air, Earth, and Water. The first will be Fire, which will be a bottling of 12-year-old Kregeliki from a well-charred sherry butt. The cast selection and packaging design pays tribute to the natural elements that contribute significantly to the production of Scotch whiskey. The Old Fire particular is a 12-year-old bottled unchill filtered at 54.3% ABV, no color added, will be available globally with a suggested retail price of 123 bucks. Really nice, high proof point. Uh, really nice. Uh, love that it's non-chill filtered. Probably get a ton of flavor out of that, which I love. Uh, the next bottle up, let's talk about this one. This is Rider's Tears. So all you Irish whiskey fans, Rider's Tears Copper Pot Du XO Cognac Cask Finish. That's a mouthful. This is the fourth expression released under the Rider's Tears range. This is a premium edition of the brand's main copper pot Irish whiskey. A blended whiskey made with no grain whiskey at all. Um, yeah, I said but. <laughs> the Copper Pot Marquee is a blend of aged single malts and aged single pot still whiskeys. Uh, it's going to be aged for additional nine months in French oak casks. 
um, that also held cognac for 10 to 15 years. So this will be available in U.S., Ireland, Germany, Holland, Canada, France, and the U.K. Bottled at 46% ABV with a suggested retail price of 60 bucks. So if you like finished Irish whiskeys, then that's, uh, that's one to keep your lookout for. And the last story of the night, guys, and one that I'm very excited for is this one right here. This is the Glen Goyne announces the first new global release in two years. This is, uh, they were globally launched the Glen Goyne Legacy Series, Chapter 1, 2019. This series will highlight the stories and people who have shaped the distillery's history. Chapter 1 celebrates the distillery manager from 1869, Cochran Cockwright. He slowed the distillery's distillation process to a third of the industry standard, which is what Glen Glowing is very known for. Additionally, he first introduced sherry cask maturation to the distillery. This is a no-age statement, single malt matured in first fill, European oak, Oloroso sherry casks, and refill barrels. It is bottled unchill filtered at 48% ABV with a suggested price, weirdly, of 71 US dollars, uh, 54.99 euros for a 700 milliliter bottle. Um, so that's supposed to be coming out actually pretty soon as well. Uh, but I thought those were pretty, pretty cool. I'm really excited about that Glen Goyne. I love Glen Goyne stuff. So to get a new first global release, I think it's pretty cool. So what you guys are saying in the chat, everyone is just saying, but. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Love the content you bring. Thank you so much. Uh, Papa Brutus. Magli. That's an amazing name, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Firewater. Yep. Uh, Santa Cruz. And how you doing, buddy? Didn't see you come in there. Thanks for coming in, Santa. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Everyone's saying hi to each other. I'd buy the Glen Goyne. That's a nice round number of $71. Exactly right, Jason. Not sure where they got that number from. All right, guys, are we ready for blended getting? Awesome. So if you guys haven't noticed yet, I have, a, uh, I have a special bottle right here that I just received from a good friend of mine in the chat. I won't call them out because I don't want them bothering them for bottles, but uh, Booker's 30th. And I am so super excited to tap into that one, and I think I'll possibly give that one a review. And then this beauty that I found, this is the Wild Turkey 13-Year Distiller Select that's uh, available overseas. I was able to grab a bottle of that uh, through a connection of mine, and I cannot wait to tap into those. So good stuff coming up, guys. Um, hey, my bourbon journey is in the house. How you doing, Scotty? Thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see. Joseph uh, Zener says, Match and Drum, no each statement on the Glen Goyne. Wonder what the average age will be. Seems low given the USD price, but expect it to be awesome nonetheless. I would agree, Joseph. I would think it's probably going to be a lower age statement. If I had to guess, probably 8 to 6 to maybe 10-year-old uh, stuff, but especially being a $71 price point. But uh, I think, you know, listen, all Glen Goyne stuff that I've had, you know, I really enjoy the flavor profile. Even the 10 and 12-year-olds are really good stuff. As you obviously get older into that, into the um, into the 18, the, the 15 is actually my favorite. Uh, I haven't tried anything. I've tried one thing of the 18 too. The 18 was great, but the 15, the Glen Goyne 15 for me, had this kick on the finish that I absolutely loved. So that kind of put it over the edge for me. So uh, nice picks. Yep. Uh, all right, guys, it is time for blend again in round one. Let's get into this. So now. I showed you who is, I'll, I'll flash it one more time, who's, uh, who's in the running tonight. So here are the contenders. Again, we have Richie Z, Whiskey Shenanigans, Christine Deems, Jason Coates, and Monica Willits are all, I don't know which glass holds what, uh, what blend, but we're going we're gonna to go through them and taste them and talk about them. And the thing I love about blends is that you can... You know, blending certain types of, you know, you, you kind of fall in love with a specific type of brand of bourbon or whiskey. And, you, you know, if you really take the time to get to know it really well, you start blending in with other stuff that you really love. That's when you really start, you could kind of start pulling out the parts of a whiskey that you really, really love. So if there's something like, for example, Knob Creek to me has a lot of peanut flavor. Um, there's like that Jim Beam funk to it. But you kind of mix that with a stag or a, or stag junior. That's something that's a little bit more cherry forward. 
or an old forester, something that's a little bit more chocolate forward, you could start really combining some really amazing flavors, especially if they mingle well together. So, um, really excited to try these blends, guys. So, we're going to go into the first one here. Now, most everyone provided me a proof point, and none of them were really out of, you know, out of the ordinary of a proof. They were all pretty close. Uh, they were around that. Uh, they were definitely all over 100. Uh, about uh, I think the highest one I got was around 115-ish. Uh, I'm not sure Mike from Whiskey Shenanigans, he didn't really know what his was. He didn't do the calculations, but um, I'm sure it's probably around that area just based on when I poured it. So this is the first one, guys. So I have everybody's initials underneath the glass. I don't know who is here, but let's get in for blend number one. Let's go on the nose. Let's see what we get. Mm. This has a really beautiful nose. This has a ton of caramel, vanilla sweetness. Definitely some brown sugar in there. A little bit of honey. Wow. There was a... Uh, I think I'm picking up a good amount of rye in here, too. A little bit of a rye note. I'm going to get some air into it. Now, I poured these out uh, about... Probably 45 minutes before the show to let them air out so I can kind of uh, go through here and see what we get. Uh, I will be giving away some samples tonight, guys, so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, if you guys are sending me whiskey, you know I got to send you back some whiskey, so. Let's see. Uh, hey, Rob's in the house. Whiskey in the Six. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Uh, let me just move that out of the way here. There it is. What is up, Rob? Thanks for coming in, buddy. I really appreciate it. Uh, so whiskey shenanigans. He Mike is saying that he has it's about 110 proof. So all right, good to know. So if that's the case, uh, if that's the case, buddy, then you're in line with a lot of people in here. So wow, this has a really peach forward type scent to it too. Really nice nose. I think I'm getting I'm picking up a lot of rye in here. Mm, I'm really curious to know like what these blends are, but I'm going to go in for a sip, guys. Cheers to the first blend of the night. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy crap. That's really good. Wait, it's... That was that was probably one of that was a really unique blend. So it started off super bourbon forward, sweet, cherry, vanilla, almost an almond flavor there. Then all of a sudden it turned, I got a nice rye kick, and I thought the rye kick was gonna stay, and then the rye kind of took off, and then it got really sweet again. That was really interesting. I can go for another sip of that one. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's maple in there. There is. Uh, I, I'm going to guess there's a little. There's either a high rye bourbon or, or a straight rye is mixed in there. There's a lot of rye kick here on the palate. Mm. That's really good. Uh, let's see. Oh, Monica's trying to get an eye at the bottom of the glass to see who's is who's. <laughs> no, 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 Monica. You can't check. You can't look. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of water. The first one, the first uh, the first blend was really good. So, whosoever that is, that's uh, sweet and then rye forward and then it goes sweet again. Really delicious stuff. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water. All right. Let's go into the nose for number two. Let's see how this one goes. Let's get some air in there. Here we go. Oh my God, completely different nose. Completely different. Oh, this is, um, okay. Now, I, Jason Coates' blend is in here and I know he did send a scotch. So I think this is probably the scotch because it has a completely different nose. You smell the barley. I think there's a, a slight, and I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any peated whiskey in there. 
it's amazing because I because I've had some peated whiskeys now. It's the peat doesn't hit me as hard as it used to. It's it's kind of faint now. So whiskey in the six. What's the wild turkey thirteen behind you? Uh, yeah, Rob, that is the that is a wild turkey thirteen distillers reserve, which is uh, available overseas. I was lucky enough to grab a bottle. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the the peat. I don't know. I can't even. Know, I don't know if there's too much peat in here, but oh, it's got a really beautiful nose. If I had to guess, I would say this is a this is has a, a really nice deep dark honey that really beautiful barley burnt toast flavor you get on a scotch. Hmm. Maybe I get the peat on the pal. If there's any here, so cheers, guys. Here we go. Wow. Holy Lord. <laughs> that did not finish like I thought it was going to finish. That, that, well, oh, that's really good too. That had such a, that had a fruity front character to it. And then it finished with this smokiness. I don't know if it's a peated smoke, but it, maybe just an old sherry aging or. I don't, I don't know if that's peated. It just had a really nice smoky flavor to it, but it it wasn't like a peat smoke I was getting. I'm going to go for one more smoke. Uh, one more. I almost said one more smoke. One more sip. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a little peat in there. Now I, now I think so. Now that it's kind of evened out a bit, it's starting really sweet. Then it turns, then you get that really nice, beautiful honey toast flavor. And then it ends with this beautiful, sweet smoke flavor. Damn. Wow, that's a really good blend, too. Uh, all right, one and two so far are pretty damn delicious. So good job, guys. Uh, let's see, what do we got? What's the ABV on the Wild Turkey 13? Uh, it is uh, 91, 91 proof. 91 proof on the 13. Uh, let's see. Joseph Brazil. Sorry I mix, mixed you up with the bourbon blind. My bad. <laughs> uh, William Dabler, some maritime notes on it. Let's see here. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a, uh, a salty kind of a... Yeah, but it's not... William, it's not overly powerful, though. I mean, if it's there, it's very faint. The, the front of it's very uh, honey, very honey and uh, orange. You know, I always say like I get this orange marmalade toast flavor on it, but there there is some, there is definitely some sea salt in here. I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some talisker or a, uh, I don't know, maybe, man, what is that? That's delicious. It has a beautiful nose. The smoke, the balance between the smoke and the sweet is really good. Really good stuff. Um, it's it's not strong enough for me to be an art bag or a or a um, unless there's like very tiny bit in there. But the smoke in there is more of a sweet smoke. It's delicious. All right, let's go to this one now. Number three. Grab a sip of water. Hey, Whiskey Quest is in the house. How you doing, Antonio? Thanks for dropping in. Hope you guys are all sipping some good stuff along with me. If you guys uh, have your blends tonight that you uh, that you put in, I hope you're sipping a little bit. I don't know who's is who's, but all right. The only one I could probably think that is I know what it is is Jason Coates because he's the only one that did a scotch blend. But that scotch blend he sent in is, is delicious. There's Yeah, there's a really nice honey marmalade then there's this smoke maritime character a little bit of sea salt in there really good stuff all right we're gonna go into the third blend and let's see what we get here wow so this is more of your basic uh bourbon nose here but this one has a lot of baking spice in it different than the first one that i had um this one is This one is sweet and spicy. You're getting you're getting a lot of apple in here, a lot of cherry. 
Definitely a good amount of oak character in there, too. Let me uh, fire this one up here. Let me really swirl it. Whiskey Shenanigans Red Solo Cup. I'll fill you up. <laughs> Gotta love the Red Solo Cup. Yeah, now now as you really stick your nose in there, yeah, all those uh, all those darker spice notes are coming out. But on the when you kind of do a first wave here, we're getting a lot of sweet notes here. Mm, that apple note on here is really punching through. Very apple cherry. It's not as uh, it's not as uh, sweet corn caramel forward as the first one. This is just pure. This is just baking spices all day. So let's go into the nose here, guys. Oh, let's go into the flavor, I should say. Here we go. Cheers, guys. Mm. Oh, that's good too. Uh, <laughs> wow, the finish just went in a total different direction. So the palate, ooh, that's definitely getting a Kentucky hug there. I, I would guess that's a good good proof. Mm. Wow, that had a really nice finish on it. The front of the palate wasn't as impressive as the finish. But the nose and the finish on this one is is really, really good. Let's go for another sip here. Mmm. Yeah, very... Yeah, it, wow, the, the finish is really kind of knocking me for a loop here because the front of it... Is your basic bourbon notes? You're getting you're getting the almond, you're getting the caramel, you're getting some, uh, you're getting a little bit, you're getting a little bit of that apple note that was there on the nose. But then as it finishes out, the finish on it is what's really sticking. It's very mouth coating. Whatever's in here, um, it's got a lot of um, it's got a lot of viscosity to it. It's coming through as extremely viscous. It's sticking to the back of the palate. There's a nice black pepper note on the end. I wouldn't guess there's a lot of rye in here, if any. I would just say that's a straight bourbon blend, if I had to guess. Um, yeah, it's it's really kind of a straightforward bourbon note in the front, but it's the finish on that is what is making that blend pretty pretty damn delicious. So, um, let me write down my notes here. See what you guys are saying in the chat here. Uh, let's see. Oh, Blind Whiskey Reviews in the house. How you doing, John? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see. So sounds like a Booker's in that one. I don't think it's nutty enough to be a Booker's. Uh, it's, it's really fruity and it's really, uh, it's got a beautiful sweet nose. But I'm not getting a lot of those fruit flavors on the nose. I'm getting, a, I'm not getting it on the palate as I'm getting it on the nose. So, um, but the finish on it is finishing really beautifully. So, let me get to my red solo cup. Gotta be careful. Don't wanna hit my symbol. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go into the fourth one, and I think. Number four is the darkest out of all of them. So um, this was the one that's pretty damn dark. If I show you guys, I have a feeling there's some high octane stuff in here, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, John, are you rocking a flannel tonight? Blonde whiskey reviews? He probably is. <laughs> All right, let's go into uh, let's go into the nose on this one. Here we go. Yeah, definitely. This one has some proof to it. Can definitely smell it. This is brown sugars. It's it's deep. It's dark. It's caramels. A lot of oak on the nose, but sweet oak. Not. I don't really get an overly oaked flavor on this. A lot of a uh, lot of nuttiness on here, which makes me think maybe there's some bookers maybe in this one or some kind of beam. 
There's a really nice almond note on here. Maybe a roasted peanut. Definitely some baking spices here. There's a, definitely a nice kick of cinnamon here. Let's go deep down in and see what we get here. Woo! That lit up my uh, my nostrils. That is some high proof stuff in here. Yeah, but once you get past that, there's some there's some beautiful uh, butterscotch notes in there. Some a little bit of maple. Definitely a lot of vanilla. Still getting a, a nice roasted almond type kick on there too. Really nice on the nose. This is this is probably the more this is probably like going to the the darker side of bourbon a little bit now. Now we're getting into maybe a little bit more high octane stuff. Really good on the nose though. As it opens up, it's starting to you're starting to get a little bit more of a cherry apple flavor, which is really good. All right, let's see what we get. Cheers, guys. Wow, that didn't... Oh, wow, that's good. <laughs> that did not... That did not taste like I thought it was going to taste. It is not... Wow, you do not get the proof that you get on the nose. That's really good. That is an absolute orchard of delicious fruit flavors oh my goodness I'm getting cherry in there orange some apple this one's all over the place let me go for another sip here cheers god it's so sweet up front my it's like candied it's like candied uh candied fruits it's fruit just like covered in 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 uh in sugar, brown sugar. Wow. Honey, cinnamon, cherry. I want another sip of that one. Oh my goodness. That is so candy rich and sweet. Mmm. Got the butterscotch, the maple syrup in there. The brown sugars. And then it does not finish like a high proofer. It's just, it's coming off really, really, just really nicely, really nicely blended, very balanced. You're definitely still getting a Kentucky hug that's just sitting there. That's really good. That is a super, that is a dessert in a glass, whatever blend that is. That is very desserty, super sweet. That's really good. Another great blend, guys. Awesome. Jason Coates, so five contenders, five votes of really good with five wows. Yeah, that's why it's going to be so hard to pick some of these, Jason, because they are so far one through four. What I love about this is they're all extremely distinct, but they're all equally delicious. I mean, well, not equally. I think there's some I like more than others, but there are all these blends are worthy of being called a really great blend. So that one, number four. The number two, three, one, all of them have different attributes, which is going to make it a little bit easier for me to pick my favorites. But, um, excuse me, yeah, a couple of them are standing out to me so far. So let's go into the some a little bit more red solo cup. Yeah, that blend, that super sweet blend, I feel like that's a... Uh, I mean, it's like a butterscotch bomb, but then you get these super fruit flavors in there. It's, I want to say there's some Elijah Craig bow proof in there just because it just reminds me of that flavor profile a little bit, but I don't know. And just, just to, just to note everyone that there isn't any, um, there has, I, I was not privy to anything that's in these blends. I don't know what's in them. I did not want to, I didn't want to know yet. And especially if people are very proprietary of their brand of uh, their blends and they want to kind of keep them under wraps, I totally get it. So uh, we're gonna go into number five, our last and final blend, and then we're gonna do some giveaways. All right. So this is the final blend here, guys. I'm gonna swirl around here. See what you guys are saying in the chat. 
Scott says next everyone should send him a vodka infinity bottle. Now that will be fun to watch. Yeah, thanks, Scott. <laughs> uh, let's see. Go Habs. Please don't say they're all winners. No, I will not do that. Go Habs. This is uh this definitely is gonna be a there's gonna be a distinct winner. Uh, they're all winner. All of you that are that that took the time to blend and send this to me are winners. But there's going to be a true standout winner at the end of this. <laughs> uh, Monica says, "Oh, mine will be very public if I win." Okay. Yeah, there's definitely no there's definitely no fireball in any of these that I've had yet. No cinnamon. <laughs> all right, so let's go to the nose real quick to see what we get. This is the most um, this is the most corn sweet corn forward uh, blend that I've had so far. Definitely high high bourbon here. Caramel vanilla. A little bit of butterscotch there. Definitely fruit forward to get some baking spices in there too. Really good. Try to open this up here a little bit. Try to think I can get some darker flavors here. Maybe get some oak. Yeah, as you go deeper now, the, the proof kind of comes to the forefront. You don't smell the proof really when you kind of whiz by it, but when you get deep down in there, the proof and the darker flavors are really starting to make themselves known. This is, this is again, this is some dark brown sugars here, some caramels. There's a there's a nice hint of a chocolate note here on uh, on the last one. Nice little chocolate note. That was the first one that I got a that I got a chocolate note on there. That's really nice. All these are very distinct. So uh, bravo to you guys. All right, let's go in for the uh, the final one here, guys. Cheers. Hmm. Wow, that one that you know what that one reminds me of? That actually reminds me of Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. <laughs> it's got this really distinct uh, corn, um, corn brown sugar, a little bit of a chocolate note to it, but then it finishes with a very like a roasted peanut flavor. That's a really good one too. Let's see here. Some fruits are coming to the forefront now. Just checking in the chat. Let's see. Okay. Let's go here. Oh. Wow, that just the finish. So this is this is like um this is like number three, where the, the front of the palette is evening out and, and kind of staying really that really nice sweet bourbon flavor. But then the finish on it is what's making itself known. It's got this really beautiful black peppery. There could be a little bit of a rye in there, but I don't know. I think it's just maybe the proof in it. Mm, that's really good. So uh, let me go for one more sip here. This one's uh, throwing me for a loop. Mm. Wow, okay, so the finish on this one, this is like delicious sweet almond sugar cookie. Oh my goodness. The finish on that one is is stellar. It's uh it's got this beautiful almond sugar cookie type blend. It actually reminds me a little bit of the finish on Blanton's Gold. So I don't know if that's in there, but that's that's really good. The The finish on that one is, is amazing. All right. So let me kind of make my uh, my final notes here. All right, guys. So uh, let me go over the prizes, uh, what we're going to do here for the winners of Blend uh, So next week on Wednesday when I announce the winner, when we do kind of the final tasting, uh, as I mentioned, first place is going to get this mash and drum flask. But on top of that, 
Um, something I've been uh, doing in the works is creating my own uh, Master and Drum curved bourbon whiskey glass. So it's imprinted with my logo on the front, and then on the back of it, it has my uh, it has my toast uh, saying that whiskey. Uh, it's not about the whiskey; it's the people you share it with. So, so the winner, first place winner, will get this. They'll get a glass, and you're also going to get to pick two samples of uh, anything that I have in my collection. So that is the first place winner. Uh, second place winner uh, is also going to get some prizes. You're not going to get a flask, but you will get a bourbon glass, and you'll get to also pick two samples from my collection. So those are going to be the prizes for first and second place. Um, and uh, if I get some shirts in time, I got some shirts printed, I might throw in a t-shirt for you too. So it should be it should be really fun, guys. So I hope you like those uh, those samples because or like those prizes because I think they're really cool. Actually, let me see if I can pull up a picture here of my uh, my curved bourbon glass and show you guys. They're really really nice. Um, let's see here. I believe I have a uh, I believe I have a uh, let's see. I think I have a picture of it. Let's see, in my downloads, uh, yeah, here it is. All right, so this is uh, this is gonna be the glass, if you guys could see that. It's a slightly curved uh, bourbon glass. It's got my logo on the front, and on the rear it has the, uh, uh, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So the two winners from the blends will get one of those, uh, but also the first place winner will also get the flask. So hope you guys are excited for that, it's gonna be really cool. Um, let's see. Hey, Fight for Sound is in the house. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Didn't see you. Just uh, throw you dropping in. Uh, let's see. That looks nice. Yeah, they're they're going to be really nice glasses. They're really well made. Um, if any of you guys are interested, it's giftsongglass.net is the ones that are creating them. Um, doing a really uh, doing a really great job. So I can't wait to uh, can't wait to get those. They're in production. So I think by the time next week. Uh, when we announce the winner, I should have them in hand or very soon after. So excited about those. Brian, it's not about the prizes. It's the friends you share the blends with. Yes, well said, Brian. <laughs> yes, you got to share the whiskey. So um, basically what I'll do is I'll give the winners a list of, I'll try to give a pretty good list of what I have. And then you guys could pretty much pick anything you want. I'll send you uh, uh, two ounce samples of anything that I have. So um, that's that's my gift to you for sharing your blends and sharing your whiskeys. As you know, I'm a big uh, a big believer in sharing what you got. So um, so in, in in that kind of spirit, let's uh, let's let's do a couple giveaways. So um, as far as the whiskey, I'm going to give away. Um, I think what I wanted to do is give away a, a couple samples of, let me grab it here, of this. So for those of you tonight that win, I'm going to give away two two-ounce samples of the Old Fitz nine-year Bald and Bond bourbon tonight. So that's what we're going to do for our giveaways. So... Um, let me think of some questions here. Uh, I didn't have time to prepare any questions because I was on another live stream right before this at Party Source. Um, let me see here. Hmm. Oh, I have a good question. So, uh, Richie Jesus off uh, just asked me, "Do you have someone lined up for the next off the still?" Yes. Yeah, I do, actually. Uh, right now, my next Off the Still uh, interview will be down at Wilderness Trail Distillery with Patrick Heist and what those guys are doing down at Wilderness Trail. Uh, if you saw my review of Wilderness Trail, I couldn't say enough good things about what they're doing. Um, they're making amazing things. They have been in the bourbon industry for years. Uh, so we are going to find out what they have in store, and I cannot wait to uh, do my next episode of Off the Still. And with that... If you guys have not watched my Off the Still episode with Elizabeth McCall from Woodford Reserve, definitely go do that. But my first question is going to be about that first episode. So when I was talking to Elizabeth McCall, we talked about her mom uh, briefly. Um, who here in the chat, for a two-ounce sample of the Old Fitz, Bald and Bond, 
Who here can name uh, the company that her mom worked for when we were talking about it? Uh, her mom was in the spirits industry. What was the company? Yeah, Captain Make It Happen. I, I'm definitely going to get super nerdy with that guy, with those two, because they have about 6,000 different yeast strains like on the, uh, like in their library that they're going to be working with. It's going to be crazy. All right, nobody's got it so far. Come on, guys. Who who did uh, who did her mom work for briefly as a? Uh, she was actually she was actually in the bottling plant. So Richie Z, Richie Z gets it. Seagrams, yes. Richie Z, great job, man. Richie Z pays attention. Woo, good job, buddy. Richie Z, I'll be happy to uh, send you a sample of this. So glad to send you. Everyone, congrats to Richie Z. He gets the... Uh... I'll even give you a little simple crash for that, Richie. Good job, buddy. Richie Z gets uh, the first sample of the night, uh, which was awesome. Uh, Richie Z, um, I have your contact info. I'll hit you up on Instagram, so don't worry about it. Uh, we'll connect, and I'll get you your, uh, your sample of the old fits. Awesome. Um... <laughs> Everyone is still uh, throwing in, so everyone's still throwing in their guesses, which is pretty cool. All right, let's go to uh, the second giveaway, and that question will be: Let's see. Uh, trying to think here, what my uh, one of my one of my latest reviews that I did. Um, let's see if I let's see what did I do? I did the Elmer T. Lee. Um, I did the old Forester. Uh, okay, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good question. So, in the old Forester uh, review that I did, I mentioned a certain amount of years that it was their first mash bill that they did a a release. Um, how many years has it, has it been since Old Forester released the new mash bill? <laughs> How do we talk about Scott? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, cap and make it happen. You got it, buddy. 150 years. Good job, buddy. Captain make it happen is fast on the on the keyboards, man. Woo! Cap and make it happen. I have your uh, info. Both so Richie Z and Captain Make It Happen, congrats guys. You are gonna get uh, two or you each are gonna get a two ounce sample of the old Fitz nine year bottled in bond bourbon. Congrats guys. Really appreciate it. Alright. Let's get back into the blends. And then we're gonna pick the uh, top two. And then we're gonna see who comes out on top. Alright guys? Let's go for it. Here we go. So back to number one here. So number one was the um, the one that started off sweet and then had a rye kick and then went back to sweet again. It was kind of a Frankenstein. So let's go for it here. Wow, that one got wow that one got real licorice all of a sudden. There's definitely some rye in there. There's definitely a high rye bourbon. Or just a straight out rye blended in there. That's really good. It's got this chocolate cherry licorice note to it. Mmm. It's weird because the front of that whiskey doesn't really... It kind of goes past you real quick. But then as soon as you get the finish, it is just licorice, cherry, chocolate. That's delicious stuff. Really good. Go for one more sip of that one. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's good. The finish on that is is stellar, man. Wow, that's awesome. All right, uh, 
Um, yeah, congrats, Cap, and make it happen. Awesome. Lockness, Eric Waite was the was alive back 150 years ago. <laughs> Lockness, that's funny, dude. <laughs> Eric Waite. I love Eric Waite, man. That dude cracks me up. <laughs> Does anyone know actually how old he is? I don't even know. All right, uh, let's get get let's get some red solo cuppage. All right, let's go into number two. Now this one, um, this one, the last time I had it was I thought was the the one Scotch blend here. Oh man, that has this amazing sweet smoky maritime character to it. Ah, oh, that is that is good. That's the one I think that's a scotch. I think it's pre I'm pretty sure it's a scotch, but it's got such a such a really great mix of sweet and smoky. Mm. That's good. It's a really nice proof. It's got definitely a little bit of a salty character to it. Ah, that's nice. Mmm. Monica Wills, hey, can you hold those bottoms closer to the camera? <laughs> no, Monica. Next time I sip it, I'm just going to sip it like this so you can't look. <laughs> wow. Um, number one and two are... Oh, this is going to be hard to choose. They're both really good. All right, let me go to number three. Let me get some. Uh, let me get some air in here. So number three has this really faint, uh, really faint flavor on the on the front of the palate, but the finish on it is what's boggling my mind. All of a sudden, all these flavors hit you as soon as as soon as you. Man, as soon as it goes down your palate, it, it just, all this flavor burst. Man, if that blend had that flavor burst in the front of the palate, like on the finish, that one could be number one. I just wish it had that much flavor the whole way through. Man. Yeah, it's it starts off like, all right, I'm not too flavorful. I have some good flavors, but you're not going to feel it until now. <laughs> and then it just smacks you. Really, really good. All right. So I think I think between one, two, and three, I think I would actually take three out just because one and two have a much uh, a much um, a much fuller flavor profile and a more of a really good drinking experience so we'll take some water here all right awesome guys all right let's go to number three let's go to actually number four so number four is the one that was like super candy sweet good finish high alcohol level let's see what we get here cheers Yeah, that's the one that's very, very caramel brown sugar forward, but on the nose it's fruit forward, and then on the on the finish it's like a sugar, friggin' a like a candy store. My goodness, it reminds me of that old dusty profile when you get just a ton of butterscotch, but it's mixed with all these really good fruit flavors in it. My yeah, the nose is just like Butterscotch City. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's all butterscotch up front. Hits the mid palate. You get some oak. Finishes with these beautiful fruit flavors. Mmm. Yeah, that one's definitely still in the running. So I'm gonna have to put I'm gonna have to put four in there still. Um. Let me go to number five. Let me get a quick sip here. Dan trying the name of science. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I'm definitely going to the candy shop uh, on number four. That's crazy. All right, last one, guys. Here we go. Cheers. Yeah. God, the more I go back to this one, this one is like like drinking in, in like a sweet sugar almond cookie. That's all it is. Maybe get a little bit of pecans on there. Mmm. God, that's, that's ridiculous. Let me go back to this one. Let me see here. Mmm. Oh, man. God, that is like... That is like sugar cookie crumbles on vanilla ice cream. It reminds me actually a little bit of the uh, Colonel Taylor Bow Proof when it opens up and that's what it kind of turns into. <laughs> that's really good. All right. So I'm going to eliminate. Oh, uh, God. What am I going to eliminate? I think between two, three, and four, one is really good, but these three are extremely unique. Excuse me. One, it had given me that really nice sweet rice, sweet flavor, sweet rice, sweet flavor. I got, I got the hiccups now. <laughs> but these three here are really bringing something different and unique. So I'm going to eliminate one. Uh, now we're just down to, let's see. Man. So three was eliminated. And I eliminated one. So we're down to two, four, and five. <laughs> Keep the scotch. Yeah, I Yeah, the the scotch blend is actually super delicious and unique. It's got this Yeah, I'm just I think I'm going to keep the scotch in here just based on complexity because of the I haven't had a scotch like that. It's it's a beautiful blend. I don't know if there's a scotch that's just tastes like this, just out of the bottle. But the combination of the honey, the barley, the sweet, and then this smoky maritime finish on it. I haven't tasted anything like that before, and I really, really like it. So I, I think two is in. Now it's just a now it's just a matter between between let's see. Between four and five. So five has the unbelievably sweet vanilla ice cream flavor profile to it. This one has this darker fruit flavor profile to it. So it's really just a matter of what I would like to drink more. I mean, they're both delicious. Oh man, four is deep, dark, rich, has the proof, has the fruit flavors, has the oak, amazing balance in that one. Five, Ugh. five is just like sugar cookie vanilla sweetness. That's amazing. I'd be happy to sip on either one of them. I don't, I don't really know which one to pick here. Um, uh, let me let me go for <laughs> for one more sip. This is tough. Jason Coates, one component is fairly dominant, but none of them quite tastes like the blended profile. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I would get that. <clears throat> hey, Claire the Third is here. Hey, that's surprising. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Claire. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, let's go here to. Three is delicious. I'm sorry, four is delicious. Let's go to five. Oh man. Five's uh, flavor profile here is. 
I don't know which one to pick because four four is something that I I would sip on that I would want to sip on constantly. But five has such an amazing flavor profile of sweetness, vanilla. I think I would have to go with five. <laughs> I think that's what I'm leaning towards. Five is delicious. So, all right. So my winners tonight are two and five. They're going to be moving on to the next round. Um, let's find out who they are. So, number two. This is the one scotch. So I'm thinking this could be Jason Coates. Yes, this is Jason Coates blend. Congrats, Jason. You uh, you made it to the next round. This is a really good scotch blend. The sweet and the smoke that you got in here, I, I don't know what's in here, but it's really delicious. Really good stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this one now, number five, I'm really interested in. I don't know who created this one, but... This one's really delicious. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. All right. So number five. Let's see. The second winner of the night is. Uh, I have my key here. Who is that? Whiskey shenanigans. Mike. Mike's blend whiskey shenanigans makes it to the next round. Mike, that is unfreaking believably delicious. Awesome. All right, guys. Jason Coates and uh, whiskey shenanigans. Mike make it to the next round. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. So Richie Z, Monica, Christine Deems, uh, thank you so much for putting in your blends. All, all of them are really, really great. All of them had very unique experiences. But for my palate, these two really stood out. Uh, so Jason Coates, you are in. And uh, let's see, Mike, Whiskey Shenanigans, congrats, buddy. You are in as well. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Very good job, guys. But uh, yeah, Richie, uh, Richie, Monica, and Christine, thank you so much. Christine still has a shout out because Christine sent three blends in. So she still has two more that, that's going to be in this in the next episode. So what I'm thinking, guys, is uh, I'll try to plan it out so the uh, so I could actually put a, a preview of a video up so you guys will know when the next blend is coming, the next uh, round two, so we can get into that. I still have blends now coming from uh, Jim Shannon. Uh, Dan Trout, uh, Christine Deem. So I have some more, some heavy hitters coming into the fold here for the next round. And then we're going to go from there. And then next Wednesday, we'll announce our winner. So um, <laughs> what can I say, guys? This was, uh, this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys sending in these blends. Um, so Jason Coates, here's your blend. And... Um, Let's see, what was the other one? Where was his? And Whiskey Shenanigans, that's your blend. So thank you guys so much for participating. This was a really fun night. I really appreciate you coming in. A fun live stream. Uh, like I said, uh, keep an eye out for the next one uh, coming up this weekend. We're going to do round two. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share with. So thanks a lot, guys, for uh, watching tonight. Really appreciate it. And I will see you very, very soon. It is Blendageddon. Take care, everyone. Take care.